Hi guys, welcome once again to the Coffee and Heroes YouTube show, your weekly roundup of all things comic related. As ever, we always like to just do a quick update just on the store. Obviously, it's been a challenging week with uh, further restrictions imposed in, in Northern Ireland. My heart goes out to everybody who works in hospitality. I worked hospitality for 15 years and, you know, it, it can't be easy given coming back from the first lockdown, getting all those... Uh, restrictions basically in place all those measures in place so people could you know come out and feel comfortable and and everything else and then you're shut down for another month again through no fault of your own so to speak so we're fortunate in that because we primarily function as a retail space rather than just a cafe uh, obviously we have the coffee of course but we function more as a retail unit so smithfield is open until further notice as far as i'm aware as ever, keep an eye on the page. We'll always keep people updated whether we're going to be closed or anything like that. <clears throat> if it does come to it and we, we do end up closed, we'll still find a way to make it work, guys. We we did it before with deliveries, with you know competitions, with raffles, with, with all sorts to keep people engaged. We really do hope it doesn't come to that, but we will just have to wait and see, unfortunately. But for the moment, unless you see otherwise, we are open 100%, so don't worry. But yeah, other than that, we had a, a pretty busy week. There were some good big releases this week, as, as there are nearly every week, to be honest. You know, it was great to see Death Metal back <clears throat> with number four. Award for Shiniest Cover of the Year goes to. Uh, there was plenty of other great stuff as well. Amazing Spider-Man 50 came out, which I thoroughly enjoyed. There were some good indie number ones. Detective Comics was strong. But as ever, I always like to try and uh, whittle it down to the three I enjoyed the most. And I've actually got a sweep of Marvel is not part of it. I do apologize. Uh, but it's only one DC and it's actually two indie this week for me for what was the best. So indie wise, we kick off things first of all with We Live. Uh, this is an Aftershock title. Now this one wasn't freely available this week. We only get sent one copy. It was supposed to come out this week. And Diamond being, well, Diamond, uh, despite the fact we'd ordered 10 copies, uh, sent us one. Uh, so the rest of them are actually coming out next week. So this is one, just if you like the sound of it, um, definitely jump on for next week. We've got plenty of copies coming in there on the invoice. I'm happy to show you. I mean, I like the inventiveness, first of all. The art, uh, I should say, this is glorious. So it's written by the Miranda Brothers, uh, who I'm not overly familiar with, I must admit. And then you've basically got art by Eve, Eva de la Cruz, colours by Dave Sharp. So yeah, I was really, really impressed with this. As I say, the artwork is gorgeous and I love what they've done here with this fold out cover as well, just to really hammer that art home. It's essentially said during a time where uh, the world has been invaded and they, the people who invaded essentially set up this idea of, right, we can take away a certain amount of people from Earth and send you elsewhere to keep the, uh, the planet going. But the thing about it is you can only bring one person with you. So it's been it's a countdown to what's called extraction day. And the idea is that they're ultimately going to, you know, move on and, and colonize somewhere else and set up uh, life somewhere else. Really, really fun first issue, despite it's <clears throat> rather macabre um rather macabre subject matter. But I thought the art was pretty fantastic in it as well. There was lots of great moments, uh great colours the whole way through it. I thought the art was, as I say, a real standout. So definitely one to keep an eye for next week if you like your sort of sci-fi, horror, end of the world stuff. Some great tech jokes in here as well when uh, the main little character is able to get his Marshall Super Cat 2000 ready to play. And he can actually see the world in a different way through it. But yeah, really, really fun issue. I really, really enjoyed that. So it did. Um, so that was We Live number one. Again, keep an eye out for that this coming week. Unsurprisingly, I thought Rorschach was awesome. Uh, this is the variant cover by Jay Lee. The reason it's a variant cover is because I collect cover A, cover B, there was a blank as well, but I didn't bring a cover A home because the demand for this like jumped at the very last minute. It's almost like it was a, uh, a title that people slightly slept on and then it came out and then the buzz was going around. So Rorschach, uh, it's gonna be a 12 issue mini series written by Tom Kane, art by Jorge Fornes, or colors by Dave Stewart. This is the J. Lee variant, which I really, really liked. But yeah, to, to say too much about it would be to slightly spoil it. All I'll say is if you really enjoyed Watchmen, if you really enjoyed the Watchmen TV show, to which this is actually linked, 
Um, Tom Keane has said he was influenced by it and he will work bits and pieces in. There is a specific mention of a that incident in Oklahoma, which if you've seen the TV show, you'll know what that's about. So really, really dug it. Setting up this nice murder mystery. Really good cliffhanger at the end of issue one. Art is to die for. Uh, Jorge Forna is really bringing it with that one. So that was Rorschach. But my pick of the week, and you will probably hear more about this on the podcast when we record it, uh, Seven Secrets number three. You're probably sick listening to me talking about Seven Secrets, but I'm going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing this title. This is possibly the best comic on the stands right now. It already is popular in the store. There's plenty of people with it in pull lists and all the rest. But we're three issues into this and see the sheer volume of incidents and content so far. It could have filled about 12 to 15 issues. But at the same time, it doesn't feel rushed. It's just, it really hits that sweet spot between fast paced and character development. There's a part at the start of this that's just all utterly, utterly shocking in how a certain character is utilized at the, the gates of Buckingham Palace. And this whole issue is just incredible by terms, funny, heartbreaking, great character moments. We're, we're doing our best to keep it in stock at all times at the moment. We've number one, number two, and then this is number three, which came out this week in stock. So if you're not on this, I really can't um, say enough that you should be because this is, this is the title of the year material. Absolutely brilliant. I should say, of course, it's Tom Taylor. Of course it is. Uh, and the artist on is Daniel Dinaculo. And really, really impressed with us. Guys, this is, this is Tom Taylor at the top of his game. And it's already a pretty high game he plays at. Uh, but as well as the pull list this week, which was around 20 titles. I only had like two Marvel titles. Don't, don't tell too many people. <clears throat> I had about seven or eight DC and then the rest were all indie. But I also got a couple of uh, sweet ass hardcover editions as well that get added to the collection. So the first one is a series that I absolutely love. So this is Black Science. This is a title by Rick Remender. And the art on this is Mario Scalera. So Black Science is this amazing interdimensional sci-fi book. Uh, I jumped on it because of the old Coffee and Heroes mantra, which existed long before the store. This was just always something I thought was follow creators, not characters. So I was loving Deadly Class from Remender. I knew about his Marvel work, so I jumped on the Black Science. This is a title I would love to talk to more people about in the store, but not a lot of people have read it. Um, but these hardcover editions, I've got all the single issues, but these hardcover editions, there's three of these. And it's just a fantastic way to, to enjoy this series. There is also a six, uh, six a trade paperback that has six issues each time is uh, available in the store as well. If you're looking for something different, <clears throat> hard sci-fi, kind of recommend enough. There is also an image first in store, so if you want to just check out the first issue for a pound, see what you think, if you want to continue with it, that's an option as well. But, I mean, I love these big books as it is, but for a, a series like this, I mean, I... I absolutely adore the art in this. It is just uber detailed, fast paced, inventive, great colors, just a thoroughly, thoroughly brilliant book. Ran for around uh, 50 issues or so, and this summer remainder's best work, to be honest. So thoroughly recommend this, guys. If you've never read it before, get on it. If you fancy something different, you'll love your sci-fi, because it's class. And then the other uh, big edition I got this week, <clears throat> Finally brought to an end a five-year pursuit of mine. So obviously, you know, I love my absolute editions. The one absolute that has always been absent from my collection and has just been impossible to get has been absolute, absolute Dark Knight. So Absolute Dark Knight was to contain both Dark Knight Returns and also its follow-up series, Dark Knight Strikes Again. I once came close to finding it. I found it on Amazon and they had it for like £75 or whatever and I got really excited. Got it in the basket, was about to pay for it, and then I sort of thought, I've been looking for this for about four years, there's something wrong here. Looked at it closer, looked at the product description, it was in German, so. However, a new printing has arrived. Oh yeah, look at that. The single greatest Batman comic ever written, now in glorious, glorious, absolute form. I mean, look at that, so you have Carrie Kelly there in black and white, Carrie Kelly in color. Awesome Batman image, black and white, and in color. I mean, the first thing I always do with any absolute is take the dust jacket off because if I'm going to be reading it, I don't want that getting creased. But same again, so you've got that iconic artwork just coming down underneath this as well. So 
If you've never read The Dark Knight Returns before, first of all, what is wrong with you? And second, uh, we have it in stock at all times, so you can actually rectify that mistake at your earliest convenience. Quite simply, the best Batman story ever written. Don't need this anymore. It was uh, Batman when he's in his 60s. He's retired from being Batman uh, for a number of years, but Gotham is getting worse. Even though age is catching up with him, something happens that gets him to put the bat suit back on again. And, the, and he suddenly feels like a younger man again, but the mind and the body can play tricks on you, certainly. It was a four issue prestige series that, you know, came out in 1986 is when it started. And that was a big year for comics because as well as Dark Knight Returns, you had Watchmen hit. So it was very much a year in which comics grew up. If you, even if you don't get the absolute edition, because um, I have ordered some more to come into the store, because they are pricey editions. Uh, we always have the trades in stock. I cannot recommend Dark Knight enough. I know this is starting to sound like an infomercial. Can't recommend Seven Secrets enough. Can't recommend Black Sands enough. Can't recommend Dark Knight enough. But these are all absolute quality titles. These are comics uh, creators operating at the top of the game. And Absolute Dark Knight is just a masterpiece. So I'm really, really pleased to get that finally. And uh, I, I tend to reread Dark Knight Returns at least once a year. And I have that edition, I have a signed leather edition behind me, which is uh, uh, signed by Frank Miller. And then I have the, the single issues as well, which I tracked down a couple of years ago. So you can never have too much of a good thing. <clears throat> but do remember, I did say that once you buy an absolute, you should never have to buy it again. So now that that particular <clears throat> grail has been found, hopefully I never have to. So we'll move away for that and on to the invoice for next week. Uh, lots of great titles coming, usual deceased update. It's not on the invoice. I did email Diamond again and again, and I'm still waiting on answers and close to giving up on it at this point. I'm starting to think it doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, uh, as soon as I know anything, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I'll share it through the social media channels. I chat to people when they come into the store, but it's just, it is really frustrating for me, both as a retailer and a fan. But again, I'll try my best to keep you guys updated with, you know, current developments and all the rest. <clears throat> However, there are plenty of good things on here as well. You know, so we've got uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 50.LR issue. So this is part of the Last Remains storyline. And issue 50 was pretty great. So I think that'll be something to look forward to. We've got Batman 101. So thoroughly enjoyed Batman 100, the end of Joker War. Now we're into Fallout territory. There's a new Batman White Knight series out this week as well, which is Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn. This is going to be a six issue mini series and what it's going to be is um mini series that are set within the dark uh, within the white knight world and i believe sean murphy's going to do covers for them and he's held the story but it's actually going to be his wife uh writing it katana collins and then you have mario scalera who did black science on art so really looking forward to that i have to say order plenty in so if it's flown under your radar just let us know and we'll, we'll get you sorted we got Blade Runner 2019, number 11. We've got Catwoman, number 26. So again, the second part of the Joker War tie-ins for that. Conan the Barbarian is back. I'm really happy about this. 14 really left you hanging, and it's been a good seven months since we've had a Conan title, at least. Speaking of great Marvel stuff, we've got Daredevil 23 coming next week. Uh, we've got the next Death Metal tie-in, which is Death Metal Robin Keane, number one. So look forward to that. We've got Dune, House of Atreides. Number one, this is going to be a 12 issue mini series that is going to tie into the upcoming movie. So something to look forward to there. You've got Excalibur, which is the next part of X of Swords. We have Falcon and Winter Soldier number four, really fun Marvel series. Fantastic Four number 25. We have Hidden Society number four, which is a great way in the title. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to read it, it it'll be hitting trade soon. Really recommend it. It's very, very good. Uh, what else have we got? So I've got a couple more Image First coming in. We're always getting these pound issues in that'll let you read the first issue of something. And for Image First this week, we've got Gideon Falls number one and Low number one. We've got Justice League 55 coming in. So that is a Dark Knight's Death Metal tie-in. Look forward to that. We've got Maestro number three, which has been pretty sweet so far. We have... I've got a couple of Mo um, Marvel Modern Masterworks titles coming in. So what these are are color reprints of early Marvel titles all combined into one and I managed to get the first volume of Daredevil so if you want to read Daredevil from the very start these are high quality premium uh, color reprints so we've got those coming in 
I spoke before about getting the Morning Glories hardcover for my own collection. I've got all the trades coming next week as well. So all uh, 10 volumes of that will be in the shelves. We've got Nightwing 75 coming in. So again, that's the last issue that's tied to Joker War. Pretty much dealing with the aftermath at this point. New title from Rick Remender, just as I'm talking again about Black Science. Uh, we've got Scumbag number one, which is a new uh, image comics title. Something is Killing the Children number 11. Speaking of awesome indie titles. We've got Star Wars Bounty Hunters, number six coming in. Stillwater by Zdarsky and Perez, number two. Stillwater was a, a previous pick of the week and a thoroughly brilliant title. We've got number ones of that coming back in as well. So if you've missed out, but you fancy catching up, we can get you sorted there. We have Venom 29 coming in. So Venom, always a big seller, always one to look forward to. We've got restocks of Warhammer 40K, Marnius Calgar. This sold out for us this week, so really, really popular. So I thought I'd get more in. I've actually got some of the Games Workshop variants coming in as well, just in case you, you prefer the variant. We've got We Live number one, which is the one I was chatting about there. We've got Wearable by Night number one. And then just a couple more to finish off with. We've got X-Men 13, so again, a X of Swords tie-in. And then we have You Look Like Death, Tales from the Umbrella Academy number two. So I know that that was another title that sold well. Uh, Jerry Ray's on a wee bit of a renaissance at the moment. The uh, the True Lives of Fabulous Killjoys we got in this week as well. National Anthem number one. It sold out as well. So it's a good time if you're a Jared Way slash Umbrella Academy slash My Chemical Romance fan. But we'll move on to a few stories. Uh, there's not tons to go through, but there is one particularly big thing that... <clears throat> I'll go into a bit of detail here, but I'm going to do another video in a, in a couple of days that'll go into an even more detail because a few people have been asking. But just the things to look at this week. So we've got new photos starting to emerge from the set of The Batman, which is filming in Liverpool. And we're starting to get more looks at Pattinson and Bruce Wayne, at Zoe Kravitz as Selena Kyle. Some still hard to believe it's Colin Farrell under those prosthetics, uh, Oswald Cobblepot. There was even some uh, photos of John Turturro as Carmine Falcone uh, and even Paul Dano as well uh, lurking in the background. So we're starting to see more and more bits and pieces come out. I try my best to stay away from a lot of this, but I kind of can't contain my excitement a little bit as well. So check out the photos. I'll fire a few up on here, but definitely check out the rest of them if it's something that interests you. Um, also in the news this week was John Favreau sort of chatting about uh, shooting Mandalorian season three. It still hasn't been given the official green light, so it hasn't, uh, but I would imagine it's pretty much a given. The Mandalorian is easily Disney Plus's biggest title so far, I would say. Outside of, of course, having that, you know, back catalogue of all the Marvel MCU stuff. But in terms of original content, Mandalorian's been huge. Season 2 hits on the 30th of October. I might even sign up to Disney Plus. Watch this space. But Jay yeah, was talking about how they hope to start filming Mandalorian Season 3 by the end of this year so that there's only really a year in between series. So they want to keep that consistency going. He also talked about you know being open to a Mandalorian movie. Personally, don't look that far ahead, just keep it as it is. I love the fact that Mandalorian sort of 25 to 30 minute vignettes rather than a feature length movie following these, these characters. So... I personally am absolutely fine if it just stays as a TV show, but they'd probably have my money if they did a movie as well anyway, I'd have to say. Um, then in terms of some Star Trek news, just again talking about TV shows, uh, apparently the Star Trek, um, Star Trek universe, so to speak, they've mapped out with the network enough shows leading the whole way up to 2027. So there's a few different shows, so they've got Star Trek Discovery, They've got Star Trek Picard, there's the animated comedy Star Trek Lower Decks as well. And then you're going to get another series coming up soon, which is Star Trek Strange New Worlds and Star Trek Prodigy. Now, I'm not the biggest Star Trek guy, nor do I have to admit, but some of these uh, more recent shows do have my attention. I really should watch through Picard because I've heard nothing but good stuff about it. And uh, yeah, and you can't beat Patrick Stewart in any role, let's be honest. Continuing with the TV news, you'll be delighted to know I started watching The Boys this week, uh, season two. Holy moly, how great is that? We're six episodes in, the last two we're going to hopefully watch uh, tonight. Really looking forward to the end of it. Episode six, if you know, you know. Um, <laughs> I was almost on the floor at one point laughing at uh, something that happened with a character called Love Sausage, that's all we'll say. 
But it's, it was a little bit of a slow burn, I thought. I thought episode one and two were a little bit slow. But once episode three hit, they upped the ante, they upped the action, they upped the sort of immediacy of it. And it just it went on this fast pace and just has not slowed down. Uh, particular shout out for Aya Cash um, at Stormfront. She's class. Um, Homelander, you expect to be great. Carl Urban's great. Just a really great ensemble show in general. And there's been some great pathos and some great uh, character payoff and development in the last couple episodes as well so thoroughly looking forward to the last two episodes but the the boy showrunner Eric Kripke he uh he confirmed this week that filming on season three will start early 2021 this is the only thing with these shows they're so damn good and you want more of them but then you gotta wait like a year year and a half but you know happy to wait for quality as always um they have confirmed that Jensen Eccles is going to be playing a character called Soldier Boy next season as well um so yeah there's a lot of stuff to look forward to the boys they have skewed enough away from the comics that you don't know what's going to happen but at the same time they've kept it close enough to the comics and the tone consistent with the comics that they're not going to annoy you know long-term watchers or long-term readers i should say but uh yeah you gotta love the eric kripke um tweet that he put out the boys will return season three begins filming early 2021 you're not ready uh, and then they have a little script page called episode 301 payback. So yeah, as I say, really looking forward to getting to the end of that tonight. So, uh, or I'm get home, Vicky, so we can watch it. A little bit of mu movie stuff. I just thought this was one that was worth pointing out. The craziest trailer I've seen this year dropped this week, uh, which is a movie called Jiu Jitsu. They threw in a, a trailer for it this week. Really check this out, guys. Really, really fun. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a head, headway on it. What you've got is penned by Jim McGrath and Dimitri Lugethesis. The story deals with martial artists facing off against alien invaders. Every six years, when the ancient order of expert jiu-jitsu fighters face a fearsome alien invader in a battle for Earth. For thousands of years, the fighters that protect Earth have played by the rules, until now. When Jake Barnes, a celebrated war hero master jiu-jitsu fighter, refuses to face Brax, the indomitable leader of the invaders, the future of humanity hangs in the balance. Injured and suffering from severe amnesia, Jake is captured by a military squad, unequipped to fight the merciless intruder who has descended upon the planet. Luckily, he is rescued by Wiley, Nicholas Cage, and a team of fellow jiu-jitsu fighters who must help him recover his memory and regain his strength in order to band together and defeat Brax. The trailer for this looks mad in the best possible way. It just looks like a lot of fun. Really do check it out. It's just called Jiu-Jitsu. It's going to be coming out in November. Uh, it does say in the article that I was reading through that it's coming out in theatres. I'm not sure that's still going to happen, but it is coming out in demand and digital download in the same time. So definitely one to keep an eye out for. There were some interesting developments this week on the idea of a crossover for DC and Marvel. So Donny Cates and Scott Snyder are doing their best to hype up this idea of an event now. I've spoken about it before. There is no better hype merchant on this planet for his work than Donny Kids. Uh, he knows how to hype his work up, he knows how to get people interested, he knows how to drive sales. So they were embroiled on a wee bit of a Twitter thing uh, where someone put it up saying, you know, they'd love to see a crossover event putting forward Donny Kids and Snyder to write it. Very quickly, uh, Donny Kids jumped on Twitter and went, I don't think anything, anyone wants this to happen more than us. I know I'm down. Snyder replied, seconded. So they're doing their best anyway. I mean, it's it's very tentative at this point, of course. There's a lot of egos involved with DC and Marvel. Personally, I see this as a no-lose situation. Surely, if these two companies come together, they could really give the comics industry a bit of a push, a bit of a buzz. Um, it would get people interested, I think, in comics who aren't even in, you know, into comics at the moment. But it would certainly help them get there, I think. So, you know, I, I'm all on board for this. I always said Snyder and Kids would be a great twosome to write it. Get Greg Capullo and Stegman on art. There you go. You're basically just putting metal and venom together. Can't go wrong with that. But there were some great, uh, great suggestions. So there were. Um, I did like where, where is it? I do like how um, there was someone jumped in and went, we need to see some venom beating up Green Lantern. We need to see Deadpool versus Deathstroke. If Plastic Man's involved, you have my money. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see this. And... I have a feeling it's bubbling. Having just recently read Donny Kate's crossover, we got an advanced preview copy of it, and it is going to be awesome. Well, it's going to be big. It's already awesome because I've read it. 
but I get the feeling that this is a road they might be going down, so definitely watch this space with regards to that. Uh, a wee story that did catch my eye, I just thought was really, really interesting, is there is a piece of comic book history that has found its way into the public domain, and it's going to be put up for auction. It's the original cover art, cover art for Amazing Spider-Man uh, 129. So this was a, a very, very much a key issue. This introduced us to Frank Castle, aka The Punisher, and the original art is just bloody gorgeous for it. I mean, it's a beautiful cover as it is, if you haven't seen it. Yellow cover, you've got Spidey in the crosshairs, you've got Punisher aiming a rifle. Um, beautiful, beautiful color. And the cover art is valued at $2 million. So if you guys want to do a whip around with me, we'll see if we can raise the two mil. Display it in the store, win-win. And then one last thing I'm just going to finish off on, and this is what I was talking about when I say I'll probably do a more detailed video down the road, and certainly when the previews books hit. DC have been teasing this uh, little, uh, little. <laughs> they've been teasing this uh, event through comics recently called Future State, but they haven't went into details until now. They've just been showing this logo off uh, with a sort of um, tech blue and black uh, color scheme just behind it, and they finally have now announced what it is. So what is DC Future State? DC Future State gives fans a look at the future of the DC Universe this January. An all-star lineup of writers and artists to introduce future DC superheroes and terrify new supervillains in this two-month line-wide event. So basically what this is, for two months in January and February, DC are going to be stopping their ongoing titles. Now during that time, miniseries are still going to launch, so you're still going to get new issues of Clayman and Tom King's Batcat. You're still going to get new issues of Rorschach. You're still going to get new issues of the recently announced Batman Black and White. Um, so th these are a few different examples, but all the ongoing, so your Batman, your Action Comics, your Superman, Wonder Woman, all these ones are going to go on hiatus for two months. And they're going to be doing these sort of short mini events that are going to focus on the characters of the future. I get the feeling this is slightly, this is slight fallout almost from that planned fifth generation event that Dan DiDio was trying to spearhead. And I kind of get the feeling a lot of the work was done, but DC didn't want to line-wide change all their books. Certainly not with the great work Tinian's doing on Batman and, you know, new creators coming in soon for Superman and, and all this kind of stuff. So what they're doing is they're essentially releasing sort of four-issue miniseries, two-issue miniseries, that kind of thing throughout January and February. So they gave you a little bit of a breakdown, and as I say, I'll just do this quickly, but I'm going to do a more detailed one soon. So if you look at the Batman family, you've got Future State, the next Batman. Uh, so this one is going to be one to four, four issues. And it, what it's going to be is it's going to be oversized. So you're going to have, it's almost going to be like an anthology title where you'll have different parts written in this one book. So for this one, you've got the next Batman by John Ridley, uh, who was the screenwriter in 12 Years a Slave, Oscar winner, no less. And art's going to be by Nick Darrington. But then throughout the book, you're also going to have Outsiders by Brandon Thomas and Sumit Kumar. Arkham Knights by Paul Jenkins and Jack Herbert. Batgirls by Vita Ayala and Aneki. And Gotham City Sirens by Paula Sevenbergen and Emanuela Lupicino. So that's Future State, the next Batman. You're also going to have Future State Dark Detective 1 to 4. So again, there's going to be three individual stories that go through this. You've got Dark Detective by Mariko Tamaki and Dan Mora. Yes, his art is incredible. Really looking forward to seeing what he does with Batman. Uh, Grifters by Matthew Rosenberg. Been with Marvel for years. Now writing Batman, or Grifters. Carmine DJ Domenico on art. Then you've got Red Hood by Joshua Williamson. Again, another great uh, choice there. And the artist in this is someone I'm not familiar with, which is Giannis Milano-Giannis. Then you're also going to have monthly mini-series as well. So I think these ones will be just two issues. So you'll get one in January, one in February. You've got Future State Batman Superman by Jean Lun Yang and Ben Oliver. Great art, great team there. Future State Catwoman by Ram V and Otto Schmidt. Future State Harley Quinn by Stephanie Phillips and Simone DeMeo. Future State Nightwing by Andrew Constant and Nicholas Scott. And Future State Robin Eternal by Megan Fitzmartin and Eddie Barrows. So that's the Batman family, what they'll be doing in January and February. For the Superman family, same again. So you're going to have oversized comics and then monthly miniseries and one-shots. So for the oversized, you've got Future State Superman of Metropolis 1 to 2. This one will include the story Superman of Metropolis by Sean Lewis and John Timms, The Guardian by Sean Lewis and Cully Hammer, Hamner, and Mr. Miracle by Brandon Easton and Valentin Delandro. You have Future State Superman Worlds at War 1 to 4. 
That's going to contain Superman Words of War by Phil Kennedy Johnson and Mikhail Yannin. Midnighter by Becky Cloonan, Michael W. Conrad and Gleb Melnitkov. Black Racer by Jeremy Adams and Sia Owen. And Mr. Miracle by Brandon Eastman and Valentin Delandro again. So that's obviously going to continue what was in Superman and Metropolis. Then you also have Future State of Mortal Wonder Woman 1 to 2. And that's going to be a Mortal Wonder Woman by Becky Cloonan, Michael W. Conrad and Jen Bartel. And Nubia by L.L. McKinney, Aletha E. Martinez and Mark Morales. Then when you get into your one shots and mini series, you've got House of L by Phil Kennedy Johnson and Scott Goleski. So that's a one shot. Uh, Cara Zorel, Superwoman by Marguerite Bennett and Marguerite Sauvage. Future State Legion of Superheroes by Brian Michael Bendis and Riley Rossmo. Future State Superman Wonder Woman by Dan Waters and Leila Del Duca. Del Duca. Future State Superman vs. Imperious Lex by Mark Russell and Steve Pooh. That's a three issue series which will end actually in March. I thought this was just a January, February event. And Future State Wonder Woman by Joel Jones. We've also got the Justice League family. So you've got uh, Future State Justice League 1 and 2, which will include Justice League by Joshua Williamson and Robson Rocca. And Justice League Dark by Ram V and Marcio Takara. Future State Green Lantern 1 and 2, uh, Lost Lanterns by Jeffrey Thorne and Tom Rainey, and Tales of the Green Lantern Corps by Josie Campbell, Ryan Cady and Ernie Altbacker. Then you've got Future State Suicide Squad 1 and 2, this is Suicide Squad by Robbie Thompson and Javi Fernandez, and Black Adam by Jeremy Adams and Fernando Pissarro. Whew, a lot of titles here. Monthly miniseries, Future State Aquaman by Brandon Thomas and Daniel Samper. Future State The Flash by Brandon Vietti and Dale Eaglesham. Future State Teen Titans by Tim Sheridan and Rafa Sandoval. Future State Shazam by Tim Sheridan and Eduardo Panseca. And Future State Swamp Thing by Ram V and Mike Perkins. So, a ton of titles to look forward to there. They've revealed a lot of the um, covers for them. There's this really great sort of uniform effect uh, which almost borders around the, uh, the main cover image. I'll make sure that I've done a whole pile of them over the top of the, the announcements there. There will be more information about this when it hits the previews books, which should come not next week, but the week after. Uh, we'll be doing our previews podcast. We'll go into a lot of detail on this as well. And again, I'll probably do another show where I go into a bit more detail and you know point out the creators who maybe you haven't heard of and what work they've done before and that kind of thing. So tons to look forward to there. I should say that <clears throat> there's, there's two ways to look at this from a retailer point of view. We could either just continue, if people are on Batman, we can put them down for the Batman titles. If people are on Wonder Woman, we can put them down for the Wonder Woman titles. Or you can come in and tell us what you want. Um, we, we never like to presume what people are going to want or continue with. You know, maybe people have no interest in this at all. I don't know, but uh, we will do our best to get all the information out there, make sure it's as clear as possible what's happening, and then you guys can decide what you just want to go for and you know get in touch through the Facebook page or pop into the store or whatever suits best. So yeah, so that is DC Future State. Uh, more detail coming soon, as if that wasn't detailed enough. But anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, as ever, keep an eye on all the social medias, tons of announcements over the next week, different bits and pieces. We've got some CGC books coming back. We've got more submissions to send off. So again, there's going to be a, um, I'm going to be sending off another parcel at the end of this month to CGC. So if you have anything you're interested in getting done, please do call in the store and we'll get you sorted. And... Uh, also, keep an eye on the podcast network. We just got caught up with our review show. Uh, we've also got another creator interview that's currently being edited and will be out next week. And uh, yeah, just tons of good stuff going on. So there is. So uh, get in touch in, in any way if you want to chat about anything or you're unsure about anything, you know. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week, guys. I hope you guys stay safe out there. As ever, I look forward to hopefully seeing you in the store. In the meantime, take it easy.